Hello and welcome. Hi, everyone. I can see our Zoom webinar filling in with attendees. I am delighted to see so many people. Um, welcome. If you're here for a conversation about amazing heritage barbecue in San Juan Capistrano, you are in the right place. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today at Alts Alive. Today's guest is Daniel Castillo, founder and pit master of Heritage Barbecue in San Juan Capistrano. The barbecue at Heritage has won so many awards. I cannot, I could not possibly name them all, but it's basically all of them. This is the best barbecue that you can find in California, according to the experts. Danny will be in conversation with Alta contributing editor, Los Angeles Times columnist, and I think it is safe to say barbecue enthusiast, food enthusiast and expert, Gustavo Ariano. Gustavo profiled Danny in the latest issue of Alta. So while I see you all still arriving, let me make a brief pitch for Alta. Um, Alta is a quarterly magazine focused on California and the West. In fact, Gustavo is one of our contributing editors and writes a great deal for us. Um, if you like what we do here today, I so hope you will check us out. Both our magazine, Alta Live, we do every Wednesday. We have the California Book Club that meets monthly. In fact, tomorrow night, we're hosting Maxine Hong Kingston for a discussion on her book, The Woman Warrior. Um, so again, I, I hope you'll consider checking out Alta. I think we do amazing work like we're about to see. Um, as we get started, you'll note there's a Q&A button at the bottom. Please use that. I'll pop back at the end and we, we've already gotten some email questions for Danny, but please ask your barbecue questions, questions about um, heritage and how the story of how it came to be is incredible. Also, please use the chat feature to let us know where you are zooming in from today. I'm up here in Novato, um, Novato, North Bay, in the middle of a rainstorm, but um, it's fun to see where everyone's watching from. So again, use that chat feature and say hi. Um, with that, I'm going to get lost, turn this over to my colleague and friend, Gustavo. All right. Hola, everyone. Gustavo Ariano, contributing editor to Alta. Welcome to beautiful San Juan Capistrano, Mission Town. The Mission, San Juan Capistrano, right behind us, past that American flag and past this wonderland of barbecue. We are at Heritage Barbecue. Four 1,000 gallon smokers are behind me right now, finishing up some of the, the best brisket in California, probably some of the best brisket in the United States. So we're gonna be eating, we're gonna be talking. Danny Castillo here is the, you know, the chef, the el chingon de all chingones, el capo de tutti capi of all barbecue in California. And we're gonna talk about who he is, get some food, but more importantly, we're going to start with the drink. We got here some Blinking Now bourbon from Santana. Have you ever had them, Danny? I have, of yeah. Course. I've it's been there stuff. plenty of times. So let's pour some shots. It's lunchtime, so we get to pour a little bit more than usual, but not too much because we still have to go to dinner. That's more for you. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good pour right there. That's more for me. So, salud. Salud. Welcome to Alta Live. Thank so, you. Mm. Ah, this is good stuff. Good order online, too. Ooh. Nice and toasty, not too hot, but it'll get you nice and where you have to get. <laughs> you have this amazing origin story. Uh, I mean, you, you are now barbecue royalty, and I know you don't want to call yourself that because you're chill and whatnot, but you're just a Chicano from Southern California who started off with a smoker that you got off the Craigslist. And so start, start us off. What was barbecue like in your upbringing? What led you to you wanting to start doing these cookouts from your backyard, from your driveway, not backyard? Yeah. Um, you know, my grandfather had played a big part in the inspiration of, uh, of my cooking career. My grandmother, too. Um, my grandfather, the only time he cooked was outdoors. So uh, he often did things like uh, he'd do steaks, you know, which is not a really big thing for, for Mexicanos to cook, so you know, like unless it was, yeah, <laughs> but he liked the beef. And it was really... Um, a thick steak he loved his ribeye and uh, my grandma would go to ralph's and buy like a a thick ribeye steak for him on fridays you know after work and that's what he would he would cook so he did that always over wood the funny thing was now that i think about it since he was uh he was in the laborers union he used to do masonry work so a lot of the wood that he was using was old two by fours and stuff like that <laughs> some of it even have concrete that was oh stuck my on God. It. it gives it a little passion <laughs> yeah of concrete chewing yeah so he would do that sort of thing um 
I'd hang out with them. Uh, when we did uh, carnitas was a big thing that he used to like to do. Same thing. He had this big copper castle outside. You know, he had a couple uh, blocks and he'd be feeding it wood and, you know, he'd start drinking and, you know, I would take over and keep that fire going, you know. So that was fun. Uh, but uh, later on, my wife and I, uh, we had a we had our daughter, Karina, who's now 22 years old at a very young age. So um, I, uh, I used to cook, cook in the backyard and we had this, uh, actually this apartment that we moved into uh, in the city of Orange, um, right off of Glacelle had a, uh, a, one of those uh, drum pits that was right up front. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was already there. I mean, it was all rusty and beat up and everything, but um, yeah, I just go to the store and buy a big bag of mesquite and, you know, I'd cook uh steaks for her carne asada pollo asado stuff like that uh and then uh you know started experimenting with cooking uh ribs and tri-tip and all that sort of thing and uh and from there i mean it just uh turned into something where you know hey i, I might have been marinating some chicken um you know to do some kind of teriyaki chicken or what you know we would do these really awesome things for my daughter's birthday uh we would do like these uh almost like an L and L Hawaiian style, oh, you know, barbecue. Yeah. yeah. So we did like a Hawaiian style barbecue with the Mac and the rice and all that sort of stuff. And so, yeah, from there, just, you know, kind of snowballed and, you know, my aunt wanted some, you know, carne for a party and then it was the neighbors and so forth. And, uh, we decided to do a little pop-up in the backyard. We were going to open it up to friends and, you know, throw some stuff out there on, the internet and uh we had people showing up you know neighbors and that were smelling it and um some people that had no idea how they found out about it but they were there and uh we did that a few times until you know obviously like we got in trouble like i told you about having that because you're not supposed to be doing that out of your backyard yeah and uh then we started doing pop-ups at breweries um some friends i know that own breweries at the time where we're brewers and uh yeah, the, that's pretty much it, you know. You could read the whole origin story in the article that I did for Alta on this issue, and it's a great origin story, especially you getting nabbed by, you know, the city of Garden Grove. This is why it's <laughs> called Garbage Grove, people. They kicked this guy out. They kicked this guy out. We moved away yeah. after that. Oh, yeah. Why do you want to be in Garbage Grove at that point, you know? <laughs> but do you still have that original smoker, that 500-gallon smoker? I don't. So oh, that, yeah, the first... Yeah, okay, I, I got to interrupt because he should have kept it. It should be like in the front bronze, you know, like a fucking national monument <laughs> at this point. Yeah. So that, no, but now, of course, Danny's completely blown up. You have these humongous smokers, custom made. You were the first, actually. These smokers were the first officially certified in California. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, it was a long process. We actually built the restaurant not knowing if we were going to be able to certify these for NSF for food use. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we built the whole restaurant around them and uh we pulled off something that people have been trying to do here for a very long time there's actually been some people that came here from texas to open up a barbecue restaurant using these offsets yeah they couldn't figure it out so they went back home damn oh my god that's incredible and of course you're doing it here you have to come folks to heritage barbecue we're going to see some of the food in a little bit and eat it but more importantly it's a vibe here you got again this you have these offsets they look like mini submarines Usually we have a short line right now. The line's like 15 minutes, but usually on weekends it's extending like for hours at a time. Yeah. I, he has this great, uh, you had this great line where you're like, you'll see the human, <laughs> you'll see the human condition on the line. At the beginning, they're friends. Yeah. Then at the very end, they realize there's no more barbecue. And they start fighting. Like, how, why do you get the ribs? Why don't I get the ribs? Yeah. Have you, how have you dealt with, you know, all this fame with all these people looking to you as the barbecue guru, guru of California? You know, I don't know. I don't really consider, you know, the fame part. I don't really, you know, it's, I don't know. I think it's just different. Uh, being here in Orange County, it's a little different. Like, I think if we were in Los Angeles, there'd be a lot more of that kind of Hollywood vibe yeah. going on. Um, down here, it's pretty, it's pretty mellow. Uh, you know, obviously there's, there's things like, let's say for instance, like, like Eater or something like that. Like there's not an Eater Orange County. There's an Eater LA, there's a Eater San Diego. So there's not, Orange County one so we're kind of Orange County really hasn't really been known I mean at in like if you ask people in Los Angeles that they want to come in Orange County most likely they they would choose to do that yeah and 
Taco Maria is one of the pers- yep. places that Patients everybody everybody in LA knows about, but they don't really know about very many other restaurants besides Heritage now. Yeah, no, and also just to put it in context, we're in San Juan Capistrano, which is south, south Orange On County. the borderline. We're, really, we're, we're pretty close to San Diego County, so yeah. we're really far out there. And so when the people come and taste, you know, taste your food and from long distances do they taste worth it like that yeah drive? that's and that's the thing and that's what we strive for is that you know there has to be worth it especially with the long lines you know we uh we have people all the time that come up to me or walk by and they go man i've been waiting for 45 minutes i it better be worth it and, I'm, and i told you know i'm confident in my food so you know i said yeah you're in for a treat yeah. yeah you're like you know what you're gonna bring yeah you don't just do brisket the brisket of course is your specialty that is the stuff that's smoking right now for hours on it and we'll get to the concept in a little bit you're also doing links you're also doing you know uh, chicken ribs or rather uh, pork ribs whatnot but the great thing about heritage is that you're not just a straightforward barbecue stuff you have filipino influences mm-hmm. you have uh, vietnamese influences right. mexican influences you'll right. do burritos you'll do a banh mi you'll right. do like a like a you know adobo with filipino stuff why is it important for you to bring all these different traditions into what you could easily pass off as a barbecue spot i think uh you know barbecue restaurant a uh, real barbecue restaurant should be about community mm-hmm. so it should be a place that people feel comfortable you know regardless of where they're coming from um and we love to see it and i'm not too i I could south orange county is not a place where you see a lot of diversity you don't see people like me and danny here yeah and you know what and they're here they're just kind of like stuck in an area so we want to tell people you know hey you can come out like come out come out from the body and come over here and 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 we've done that we've uh we've had these a couple young ladies come a a couple times where you know with a, a few dollars in their pocket you know we're not we, we would never turn anybody away that was hungry. And uh, yeah, we want to feed our community and, and make it affordable. Actually, we're working on a couple of dishes that we're going to have for the winter time where, you know, it's going to be very affordable for the people that live here in this wow. community. And, uh, you know, so we can make sure that everybody's fed. You could easily just charge a shitload for everything that you sell. You don't have to be so charitable. Where does that heart come from? Uh, just being human, I think, man. Uh, you'd be surprised. There's a lot. Of no, I understand that. that. I understand that. But you know, to me, it's it's no other way. I mean, when we were at the height of the pandemic, you know, we were doing all these uh, giveaways for people in the hospitality industry, and it's just it's important. You know, it's uh, I think it. You know, from where we started, we you know we had this little voice that was given to us. Yeah. And like you know, I just felt it was our duty to, if you had a voice, to use it in the in the right way so that's the way i thought you know uh, last year uh, for thanksgiving we gave a re- gave away like 75 turkeys wow. to people in the community and we said you don't even have to you know just shoot us your name whoever's gonna pick it up you don't you know this is not a contest or anything like that if you need it just come pick it up and then we you know we filled that list very quickly and uh yeah people came and they picked up their food that's just incredible I yeah. mean, just another reason to support heritage and just try the food I didn't really uh, point it out in the story, but when I, I hung out with you, it was like a thing. I came here at 4.30 in the morning. I asked you, like, I want to be here from the very beginning. Like, mm-hmm. not when it opens, but from the very beginning. So walk us through your typical day at Heritage. Yeah, your, yeah, your day at Heritage. Yeah. From yeah. the start all the way until the last person leaves. Yeah, so it would be uh, coming in to work. Uh, usually one of my guys is with me, Chris. He's our lead pit guy in the morning. And uh, We're talking 4.30 in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. We fire up the pit. You know, there's not a lot of coffee places that are open at that time. So we have to wait till about seven for that to happen. But uh, yeah, we fire up the pits. Um, we get the proteins that we're going to put on for the day. Um, the uh, firing with white oak. Yeah, we're firing with white oak and avocado, yeah. sometimes live oak if we can get it from Rancho, Rancho Mission Viejo. Uh, so uh, pork ribs will go on. Um, half chickens will go on. Turkey will go on. And then after that, sausage will go on. Um, and the briskets had already come off from the night cook. So there's a period of about two and a half hours where somebody's, somebody's not manning the pits, but the coals are still hot. So you got to see the process on how we fired them up. It's pretty simple. Um, so these things are going uh, six days a week because we start always the day before yeah. and uh, for the next day. And so throughout the day, uh, we're just checking on the proteins. I have a great staff. They're, uh, they're really, um, they're, they're a great team. So they know what to look for. And it looks like we have some food coming in this way. Finish your thought. 
Yeah. But uh, thank you, Chef. This is hey, uh, up, Chef Nicholas. Say hi to the camera right there. Hey, how are you? <laughs> he's an he's amazing our, chef. He's our executive chef for the restaurant. So, um, thank you. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Um, so, uh, yeah, throughout the day, it's just about checking on the proteins and then putting out small fires around the restaurant, uh, making sure that everything is, is ready for service to begin. And then also quality control, because that's their biggest thing. Not everything comes out perfect. So we have to check um, on the proteins and how they look, how they're slicing. Um, you know, things sometimes dry out. That's just the nature of the game when you're cooking so many different proteins at once. Briskets have their own mind. They have a mind of their own, really. So, you know, when they're coming off the pit, they're all coming off at different times. So uh, it begins, uh, it's, it's tough to make sure that everything and the consistency is there. Yeah. So that's, that's what I do most of the day is just make sure that everything looks on point and uh and that everybody's happy the crews everybody's going good ask them as soon as they start trickling in you know how how you guys doing how's how's your day going you know is there anything that you guys need you know stuff like that because that's really important is the is the crew and how they're you feeling all, for you the give day off the vibe not of a head coach an nfl head coach but the line coach you know you're just a man <laughs> right there all right guys you do this you do that i loved when i was hanging out with you the smokers and like you opened it up you're like asking your, your guys like, Oh, move it like this. And you're explaining at the same time, like, okay, you're like, you're doing good. And you're just so chill. And so Zen, where does that Zen come from? Phew, man, I, I have no idea. Cause my mom wasn't very, she was a real yeller and sure, stuff sure. like that. So maybe just wanting to be a little bit more chill, you know, I kind of, the way I grew Survival. up, yeah. one of the way I grew up, I was like, okay, I want to be opposite of like my parents. And yeah. I, you know, I just wanted just to try to take another, like a, a different route in life. So um, I was a very angry kid too yeah. growing up and I had kind of a really crazy uh, childhood. Um, so I just wanted us to kind of put things in perspective and just try a different, you know, and it's, it's, it's done wonders. Yeah. Oh no, you see the vibe and the atmosphere. People are wanting to work for you. Like, and, and you, yeah. and one of the great things that I, you know, that I talked about, then we'll get to the food. I know that's what everyone wants to talk about, but just, <laughs> you know, honestly, Matt, like, I'm not just saying it to like butter you up, butter you up, but you do have this heart. You were telling about how you, you know, some of your workers had family members who passed away from COVID, yeah. and you just told them, "Hey, guys, to spend whatever time you need to spend with your family, we got you. If you know, we're gonna pay for your time and yep. all that stuff." It's just been really remarkable. Just to see, it's cool that you have this success, but I think it's even cooler that you're doing this and still being like one of the better guys, better people in the uh, restaurant business in California. Yeah, I think. Um... I think uh, restaurant owners need to take a look at the people that they have working for them and, and realize that they're just an, an asset. And sometimes they just want to be, you know, kind of pushed in the right direction too. You know, I know a lot of the guys that work for me and gals that, you know, they're going to go off and do their own thing. But from what I hope, what they take out of this is that they uh, go want to work for somebody or even the next step, do their own thing. Yeah you know, because that's, that's something that they never teach you. Um, and, uh, and, and hopefully take a little bit of what they learned here and apply that to their next career. Pay it forward. Yeah. No, that's amazing. Look at this food. It is absolutely insane. <laughs> I don't even know where to start, but just guide us through what we're seeing right here. Yeah. So we have our pork ribs. It's a full spare. So, uh, nothing's been trimmed off these ribs actually. Um, these smoke for about six hours total. Uh, we have our old fashioned glaze on that. And what that is, is a, uh, it's a mixture of turbinado sugar, um, Angostura bitters, mm -hmm. and we put some orange zest inside there and we kind of cook that down for a little bit. And then that's what we brush our, on our ribs on the way out. Uh, we don't sauce anything, um, on the pit, but we like to baste with, you know, tallow and things mm -hmm. like that, just to kind of keep them nice and moist throughout the cook. And then we have our uh, tacos, our brisket tacos, and we have a salsa borracha. And this is a tomatillo avocado salsa on an award-winning Burritos La Palma tortilla. Award-winning because they won my KCRW tortilla tournament. <laughs> Best flour tortillas in Southern California. Catch them. Yeah, there you go. And then we also have the, this, the, you know, not to shun, I think the tortillas and the bread is like a great vessel, right? It's oh, probably God, like the... Yeah. So we have the OC Baking Company. This is a beautiful potato bread that they bake for us Dean Kim, and yeah, gets amazing. delivered in Kim. Every morning they deliver it to us. We have our sausage link. Uh, Len and Gunther makes all of our sausages in-house every day. It's a three-day three process. And uh, that's a cheeseburger link. 
So it has like caramelized onions and cheddar cheese in it. Um, this is a little fun burnt onion jam that I made. Mm. Uh, there's some stout in there. Um, just a fun little thing that I wanted to do oh something different. It's so so I, caramelized. Right. Like, you could spread this on a tortilla or bread. Dude, I, I just got onions and I threw them in the firebox and buried <laughs> them in coals until they got nice and crusty. Pulled them out and cooked them down, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then, you know, we're in California, so you got all the fresh stuff on the plate. Uh, and then we have our pickled stuff. So you got where you got our like California meets, you know, Texas with the pickled stuff. Everything's fresh here. Yeah. So we got to have some fresh vegetables on the plate. You know, our elote, the salsa matcha, um, uh, chicken. Uh, this is uh, actually Le Lennon's uh, recipe here where he, he marinates it in soy sauce and apple juice. So it's got a kind of a different brine on it, uh, which makes it interesting to eat. And it's a little different, really umami. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Now, I got to admit, like, I was never a brisket fan much. No, dig in, chef. This, this one looks good right here. But the brisket here, the, the, it's like perfect moisture, not too soggy, not too dry. Distinct flavors, the rub on it. What, what, what do you say you have to rub the brisket with? Was it salt, pepper, and a, and a prayer? And a whole lot of prayer. A whole lot of prayers right there. Yeah, that's uh, that's um, uh, Philip Helberg from Helberg Barbecue in Waco, Texas. One of your that's what he says. That's right. You know, just as simple what you see with here with the taco, the, the tortilla is amazing, of course. You have this green salsa that's almost like guacamole, but good with a little bit of um, pico de gallo. Just going to take one more bite and we'll continue. Mm. Yeah. I love brisket. No, this brisket is <laughs> absolutely amazing. I'm going to get some wings as well because I love oh, wings yeah. right here. Yeah, I love the sausages. I can okay, eat those. Man, this is where you put the special uh, Zoom link where people could actually smell what we're eating, right? <laughs> Sorry, folks. You're going to have to come down here uh, to Heritage Barbecue in a bit. We're almost going to get your questions, folks. Let me just take another bite out of this. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You got a little bit of cheddar cheese mm -hmm. in there. Man. I literally saw it, and it has that consistency, and that flavor is just it's, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Lennon, man. Lennon, a real superstar. He's a genius. He, he absolutely is a superstar. I'm going to get a rib. Mm -hmm. There's one more. This time I'm just going to do Fred Flintstone style. There you go. Hey, you have to. Mm. There's a sweetness to it. Like, and, it's not, and this is what I like about your barbecue. Is that the flavors are not out there. Well, you know, a lot of barbecue is just like, Oh, people are cutting. This is real life, folks. Um, <laughs> you know, keep doing your thing. The flavors are really understated. They're really just you're not too, you're not trying too hard. Far too often, yeah. I think of barbecue, especially uh, this recent renaissance of Chicano barbecue in Southern California. They're doing this, they're doing that, they're doing this place, and whatnot. It's good, but it's like, man, you're trying a little bit too hard. This is just very, again, like you, very chill. You let it speak for yourself, and what it is is absolutely amazing. Yeah, we focus on. The protein itself like uh you know and, and you get good protein as well yeah. yeah so yeah we uh west coast prime is who we work with and they source the best um proteins that are available and when something else becomes new and i hear about it that's we'll we'll go after that so you know sometimes in the restaurant world obviously that's not the smartest choice because you know in the barbecue world they usually want to purchase like commodity just the cheapest quality meats that they can get but guess what? It doesn't taste like anything, right? It doesn't taste like anything. And you're uh, supporting factory farming, which is exactly exploiting these animals, exploiting humans. It's crap. It's yeah, crap. exactly. Yeah. So that's that's what we start with. And then we kind of let the meat speak for itself and just add a couple little things, you know, like just to help it along. And that's it. Then finally, well, I'll have more questions, but we're going to get to the audience. Uh, give shout outs to some of your favorite barbecue spots in California, then favorite barbecue spot in Texas? Uh, I would say our favorite barbecue spot in California would be Moosecraft Barbecue. They're in uh, Lincoln Heights. They just opened a few months ago. Uh, really good friends of ours, Andrew and Michelle. Um, there's a lot of great guys that are doing uh, pop-ups like uh, Alan from A's Barbecue. Uh, he's all over the place in Los Angeles. Isn't, isn't he based in Lancaster? No, he's, oh, uh, yeah, he's from East LA actually. Okay, okay right on, cool. Yeah. Um, and, you know, besides that, it's getting better. You know, I wish I had more time to go out there and try more people's yeah. food, but um, that's about it. I mean, we're, Brenda and I are very picky. We're in Texas a lot. Uh, we, eat, we eat really good barbecue when we travel uh, to Texas or throughout the South. 
Yeah. And uh, so we're really picky when it comes to it. And, but those people are making great barbecue. Um, there's Bart's Barbecue in, in L.A. and Smokey Jones. There's a lot of guys that are, you know, they they have their own little pop-ups and like underground things that they're doing mm -hmm. because, you know, and they're they're doing really well because of this, because of that. It's a whole thing right now. It is. But can you topple the king? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> Matt, let's get to questions. I'm sure people are angry. Oh my people. God. Everyone is so hungry and so <laughs> jealous right now. Um, but we're, we're going to get other than just amazing compliments for how good this all looks. And we're all dying to race down to heritage barbecue right now. Farley Elliott, uh, who actually uh, is an alternate contributor. He's Eater LA, he's a yeah. writer and editor for them. He's fantastic. And he wants to know, Danny, in your mind, does California have its own barbecue style beyond Santa Maria? And how would you define it? Yeah. Mouthful of I food, think, so. um, sorry, let me finish my, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> my well, chew I'll, here. I'll <laughs> own style because and you've talked about this the history about how you had these huge pit masters in the early 1900s not in santa maria but in los angeles doing yeah. these big huge old cows joe right? romero joe romero yeah joe romero so yeah joe romero used to cook uh barbecue for pio pico and like all these you know uh slash spanish governors and stuff mm -hmm. like that and they they used to do these um they used to do these uh whole animal roasts in the ground you know we just uh worked on one here actually at the ecology center with uh chef kim byers and it's an old california uh, vaquero style barbecue so somewhere along the lines and i won't without getting too geeked out on uh the process is uh in the 70s there was this kind of thing where you know they were they decided to do um more tri-tip and that was going to be like the santa maria thing yeah. um and uh like the places like the hitching post yeah. up in you know central yeah, sure, yeah. and uh and so, you know, there's a revival and, uh, you know, California has had a rich history of barbecue and, uh, to answer, answer Far, uh, Farley's question. Um, yeah, we do. I think, uh, the flavors that we play around with are a little different. Um, there's a definite, uh, you know, to say that we are Tex-Mex, I don't really think nah, that we are no, Tex-Mex. Tex exactly. You know, exactly. You're, 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 and, you know, you're, you're part of that tradition, which, I mean, you saw, you know, your chef Filipino, you got white kids there, you got, you know, all sorts of different races. And not only that, if you grew up in Southern California, you're getting your Thai food, you're getting your Indonesian food, you're getting everything that's right. coming here. So it's bringing a tradition, even if it is based on the old California style, sure. getting more like Austin style. Right. We're bringing who we are. In right. And, you know, I can't speak for everybody else, but, you know, California is the breadbasket, right? So all the produce is coming from here. Um, you know, we have things like, you know, the corn, which is pretty much going out of season now, but, um, you know, produce salads, like we're really big into salads. I have people that comment all the time and say, you know, from Texas, they're like, man, you guys make salads. You know, they don't, <laughs> they don't make salads in, in Texas, but they are, they're starting to do that. Now you'll see fresh things on the menu. Um, so uniquely Californian. Yeah, we do have those, um, you know, we bring all these different cultures that are here and we put them on one plate. And this is what we call modern barbecue. This is, uh, you know, in, uh, in Texas and Austin, uh, Leroy and Lewis, they call themselves new school barbecue. And I, we call ourselves modern Texas barbecue. And not even trying to pigeonhole ourselves as being just Texas barbecue. We're just modern American barbecue. You're doing your thing. Next question. Next question. I, I got myself lost because um, you guys look are having too much fun. I just want to watch you. <laughs> Um, what makes these smokers NSF certified? Eduardo is asking. Uh, thank you for your question, Eduardo. Just curious as to why people have failed to implement them in other restaurants. Um, it's a it's a long process. It, it it really involves just a tremendous amount of money and a lot of uh, banging on people's doors to find out what the reason why. You know, like uh, I'm not a guy that likes to hear no. So uh, if they say no, I say why. Uh -huh. And then they, they come up with an, a, you know, this is a, an explanation for it. Okay. So what do we do to make this happen? And so that's the way I did it. And, um, and it just, it really wasn't that much, you know, it was about people making sure uh, that, you know, that they were, you're able to clean them easily. That food wasn't going to get stuck and 
cracks and crevices that you were able to clean behind them and underneath them. So it's not much different than a piece of uh, equipment in your kitchen. Uh, you know, so, you know, six feet, six feet inches off the ground, uh, things like that. Um, you know, the material that's made of has, you know, is it going to corrode? Is it, you know, that sort of thing. Is it going to, is there, is there diseases are going to grow out of it and that sort of thing. So it's just about, you know, crossing, you know, the T's and dotting your I's and, and just putting in the work to get it done. And, and that's what we did. And here in California, you know, the health code agency, they're always jerks. And I could say that you can't say that, but <laughs> A lot of people just get frustrated flat out and say, you know what? I'm just not going to deal with this. I'm just going to do something simple because I'm spending tens of thousands of dollars already every year. Like, nah, I got to do this. So there was no rules for it. Yeah. That was the it. biggest yeah. thing. So our biggest hurdle was they said there was no rule for it. So we, that wasn't acceptable, you know? So we took what was there, which was cooking over direct heat um, and pizza ovens and said, well, why is this okay? And that's not okay. So we just kept asking so many questions. And I think really, <laughs> fuck, man, I think it's just like we were so persistent that they just decided to work with us. It's, it's like in the Shawshank Redemption. I was going to say that. Yeah, the, You're getting the, the library in the prison. Yeah, you're the building the library. You just keep sending letters and letters and letters <laughs> and letters. And finally, it's like, all right, man, shut up. Here's a shitload of money. Go for it. Plus, it helps when you have everything that you've ever worked for involved in it. And it's like you can't fail, you yeah. know, so you got to make it. Point, you got to yeah. make it happen. Yeah. Next Sean, Sean asks, uh, I've noticed a new trend at the Home Depot's, Lowe's, and related stores, which are really trying to push smoking with the next generation of home, home smokers. These new cookers have apps to control the temperature, seem to be trying to diversify and democratize smoking, mm. but you don't need fancy Good apps question. or tech to cook fantastic barbecue. I'm wondering how you see this apparent approach to barbecuing. And that actually, I have noticed a lot Great of... Question smoking outside of home depot mm -hmm. yeah there's uh so huh, i have a little example so i bought at uh costco during uh some kind of sale or something labor day like a couple months ago or whatever it was uh traeger for the first time and i don't bash anybody that uses pellet grills or gas grills or anything like you work with whatever you can you can afford or whatever suits your your time and you know whatever you have going on in your life I moved it from one house to our new home and it doesn't work anymore just by putting it on. <laughs> oh my God. So, uh, you know, some of these other pits that, uh, so that, I don't know, maybe that was about $1,100 unit. Um, just doesn't work anymore. Uh, you know, you could put that same money into, uh, you know, going to a metal shop, you know, and, and finding a take on Craigslist or, or offer up and, you know, you know, just building something, you know, and, and it's, it's a learning process. And uh, as far as the, you know, there's like Oklahoma Joe, Oklahoma, you know, they have like a longhorn one and I can't remember the other model. It's a little bit of thicker metal, you know, you can get them at Walmart and stuff like that. I mean, those are pretty inexpensive. I think they're about 400 bucks and they're stick burners. And I see these guys modifying them, you know, to, to use them. Um, but uh, the advice I could give on, on that or how I feel about them is just get whatever you think, uh, you know, get that. If you have that bug and you want to learn, obviously, uh, using a stick burner is going to be the way to go. I mean, it's the most, it's the most labor intensive way to do it, but, um, you know, you, you can't, you can't get a bark on, on a Traeger like you can from an offset smoker. So if that's what you're, you're bothered with, or you're ha having problems, number one, it's about sourcing a good piece of meat. Number two is having a good cooker. One All right. Question we're... Really quickly. <laughs> um, yeah, I know we got to go fast. Okay. But I've got a million questions. Okay. Sauce. People really need to talk about sauce, Danny. Um, and you know, we got, so you don't, do you sauce during the smoking process? We do. We, after? Yeah, we do. We do tallow, which is a, it's a byproduct, I guess you would say. We render out the fat uh, from the brisket and we baste our meats with that. Um, and that's just because, you know, we don't have to go out there and buy a bunch of butter. Um, as far as sauce, we don't put any sauce on our meats besides the ribs. Um, and uh, that's that or the old fashioned sauce that I talked about. Um, I don't eat barbecue sauce. I have some here. Um, I have my mustard sauce that I like when I do right. just a little classic Texas fold over um with some pickles and some onions but uh you know if you're using sauce in my opinion you're hiding something so 
you know, they, we're not trying to hide anything here. We got a great product. We want to put it out there. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Danny. I just have to show off. Here's an article in this latest issue of Alta. Am oh, amazing restaurant. The article's whatever. But just come down here. <laughs> you see this food. It is absolutely amazing. Danny, salud. Thank you again. And Danny, salud. wait, we got one big question from the Alta team. Do okay. you ship to San Francisco? You know, very soon we are, we're looking into Gold Belly. We actually got approved for that. So as soon as we, uh, we're working on our expansion at the end of the year, we will be shipping uh, nationwide. Boom. Fantastic. Okay, well, good. Um, you'll be getting an order from the team at all. You, you guys got to come out here and have our food. Uh, okay, I, I, I'm in. <laughs> um, with, with that, I am so, so, so grateful to both of you. Gustavo, my friend, one of my favorite people ever to work with. Thank you so much. And thank you for suggesting that we do this live from this, from Heritage Barbecue. It's been so much fun to see this, to get to know Danny, um, and to, to watch you eat vicariously, I guess. I mean, I'm a little bit heartbroken. Um, for those that have tuned in, join us next week. We're going to be meeting with Dr. Chris, Professor Chris Lowe. Oh, wait, we're giving a shout out to what kind of the Blinking Owl Bourbon. Blinkin Owl Owl then really quickly also, we're not even getting to this yet. Illegal Mezcal. Check them out. It's good mezcal. Mezcal. Um, Okay, next week at this time, we, we will not be live on site in a shark tank, but we will be meeting with a shark lab expert um, telling us all about kind of the sharks off the coast of California, Dr. Chris Lowe. So we're gonna, we're gonna kind of take a 180 and talk about sharks. Um, it's shark week at Alta Live next week. It's barbecue week this right. week. This recording will be up and on altaonline.com later today. Again, we're gonna send you a link to Gustavo's article, where to find heritage barbecue. They're hours, someone asked for. Wednesday to Sunday, 11 a.m. until sold out. Am I correct? Yes? It's, yeah, it's through six o'clock during the week and on the weekends, it's kind of tricky. All right, so um, anyway, this has been a real absolute delicious treat. Thank you both so much. Take care, have fun, yeah. bon appetit. Bye everyone.